Hi everybody, this video is looking at variation and if we start off just very briefly thinking about the causes of genetic variation so um, within a population there are different genotypes mutation is the cause of um, new variation coming into a population in terms of new alleles so if you were to look at all of the genes in a population and in this example here they're all the same so LE is a gene for stem height in a particular kind of plant, pea plant. All those genes are the same. If there was a mutation, then it's possible that one of those genes could mutate and we could have suddenly a new allele in the population. So now, whereas before there was no genetic variation for that particular gene, now there is genetic variation as a result of mutation. Now, mutation is the only thing that can uh, cause new alleles to be introduced but there are lots of other things which can cause differences between individuals in terms of which um, combinations of alleles are present so for example a crossing over at meiosis and independent of assortment of chromosomes during meiosis cause different combinations of alleles and then because we have random mating and random fusion of gametes you don't know um, which alleles are going to come together from different individuals um, during sexual reproduction. So all of those things can cause genetic variation so there are differences in the genotypes within a population. This video is more interested though in the phenotypic variation that we see and genetic factors are one of the main reasons why we have phenotypic differences. So for example, if we think about blood group, somebody could have the genotype IAIA and that directly causes, the, has a direct effect of them having blood group A. And the genotype here is the only thing that determines what blood group they are. Nothing else determines their blood group. Somebody else who has a different genotype, so maybe IBIO, because they've got a different genotype, they have a different phenotype. So the differences in the phenotype in the population are a direct result of the differences in the genotypes. Now, it's very unusual that genetic factors are the only thing that determines phenotype. Usually, the differences in phenotype in a population are a result of genetic factors and environmental factors. So the environment influences what's going on with the genes. So we're just going to look at a couple of examples. And the first example is Siamese cats. So Siamese cats have got um, a recessive allele um, and they've actually got two copies of this recessive allele. And because they've got both copies, so because they're homozygous recessive, they make a form of tyrosinase enzyme which is heat sensitive. Uh, and that means that it only works at some temperatures and it doesn't work at other temperatures. And 33 degrees C is the, the sort of temperature that makes a difference. If the temperature is above 33 degrees C, then the tyrosinase enzyme, sorry, the tyrosinase enzyme doesn't work. And that means that no melanin is produced. So you would get a lighter color coat. If it's, if it's below 33 degrees, then the tyrosinase enzyme does work. It produces melanin, which is a pigment, and so you get darker areas of coat. And the interesting thing is that the, um, the colour of the uh, coat varies in different places in the body because the body, some bits of the body are warmer than others. So usually you would find that the extremities, so the, the tips of the ears, for example, they're usually cooler than the rest of the body. So because they're cooler, that means that melanin is produced. So you end up with the Siamese cats showing dark um, highly melan uh, uh, places lots of melanin in the tips of the ears, the nose, maybe the you know front of the face, the ears, and things like that. So it's the uh, gen the genes that are causing the tyrosinase to be produced, but then the environment has an effect on the phenotype as a result of that. Um, we can also see environment playing a uh, part in the phenotype of plants all the time. So for example, if you have a plant and that plant has been grown in a low nitrogen environment, you might see 
uh, that the plant has quite low mass. It hasn't grown particularly well. If you were to take a genetically identical plant and that plant is grown in high nitrogen soil, the biomass is much greater. So the genetically identical, so the only difference there is the environment. Low nitrogen, low biomass, high nitrogen, high biomass. So the genes are determining you know, how big the plant could grow to in, like, in theory, like the potential, and then the environment determines what actually happens. So within our phenotypic variation, we can categorize it into two kinds, discontinuous and continuous. So discontinuous variation is where um, if we have our phenotypes, so we look at the phenotypes in a population and we count the frequency of organisms that show the phenotypes, we could plot them like this in a bar chart. So blood groups is, again, the obvious example. So with discontinuous variation, the variation in phenotypes shows distinct groups. So blood group A, B, A, B, O, for example. There are no intermediate values. You can't have sort of like a little bit of A and B. There, you can have A, B, but that is a distinct group. So there are no intermediate values. And this takes place when there's only one or possibly just a, a few genes that determine the phenotype. So we saw before that the genotype, the genes for blood group, uh, there's just that one gene, okay, the I gene. That's the only gene that determines blood group. So when that happens, you're more likely to see this discontinu discontinuous variation. Also importantly, the environment doesn't have any effect. So if you've got discontinuous variation, the genes are causing the variation, the environment is not influencing that variation at all. So continuous variation, in contrast, if you were to take the frequency of the different phenotypes, you would get a graph like this. So height is a good example. If you were to take a population, measure their height, put it onto a graph, you'd see this bell-shaped curve. Most people have a height around here, the average, lots of people this height. You get a few people who'd be very small, a few people who'd be very tall. But the important thing is there's a range of values. You can be anywhere, your height could be anywhere along this continuum. So if you've got a range, then that means there are no distinct groups. Now, continuous variation, if you've got a characteristic which shows continuous variation, so height, for example, so height is a characteristic that shows continuous variation in the phenotype, it will be controlled by polygenes. All that means is there are many genes that all contribute to that characteristic. So there isn't one height gene in humans. There are many different height genes and they all have a little bit of an effect, but they add together. Some of the genes might have more an effect than others, but they all contribute to the overall height. So when that happens, when we've got lots of genes that all contribute to the characteristic, we call it a polygene. The important thing is not, it's not only that we've got lots of genes all making a difference, uh, all contributing to the phenotype, we also have environmental effects. So the environment affects the phenotype when you have continuous variation. Um, just to go back to sort of the same similar example from before, uh, if we have a plant and this plant is grown, and you can see that it reaches this height. So in these particular environmental conditions, the, the plant reaches this height. If you were to take a genetically identical plant and grow it in different conditions, it might be shorter. And if you grow it in different conditions again, it might be taller. So, oops, sorry, go back a bit. So they're genetically identical, okay? So the genes are they sort of put the limits on what the height could be. So the genes that this plant has for height mean that it could be this tall, it could be this tall, or it could be anywhere in between, depending on what the environment is. But the genes for this particular plant, it doesn't matter how positive the environment is, the genes will not allow the plant to grow this tall. So 
the genes that it have, the genotype that it has, sort of act as the like the constraints, and then the environment determines where within that potential range that phenotype ends up. So it can't grow to a height taller than the genes would allow. Okay, uh, and that's about it really. I think the most important things here is just the idea that we've got polygenes and the environment both combining to determine what the phenotype is. And as a result, the phenotype would show continuous variation. Okay, that's all. Thank you.